copy written production of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching. No, I just wanted to make sure that everyone puts, everyone puts their phone on quiet because it's extremely annoying to try to give a presentation. And make sure that you sign, the committee signs their sheet, the guests need to sign a sheet. Thank you. Great. Well, if this ever comes up, we'll have uh, a video, but you do have a presentation that if you feel that it's warm, it was printed about two and a half minutes ago. Uh, so uh, we, we kind of got tied up at the uh, Footprint Center looking at seats. Uh, so what, what we uh, decided we were going to do is we're going to spend two meetings just on the, the pack, okay? Because that seems to be a, a very uh, important topic for this process to move forward. Really. Um, uh, my colleague, uh, Jeff, Jeff. <laughs> uh, was planning on being here and giving a presentation. Uh, he has a sinus condition, so he, he can't be here. Um, I will give you a, a synopsis of what I think he was going to say. And that is that he's gone through the uh, survey results and found that most people, most of the members are satisfied with their uh, amenities here, uh, as they exist today. Uh, I will make one big caveat. The Players Club uh, is operating on unsatisfactory conditions. So with that, I want to dig into the presentation of the heck with the computer. Let's go to paper. Uh, one of the things I've been exploring with different members that have brought this up is the use of retractable theater seating. And when I, well, it'll take its time. By the time the presentation's over, it'll be up there. Um, and so we started to investigate retractable theater seating as an option for a uh, performing arts center, or, which makes it dual purpose. Um, now, what I started out with is bleachers. You're going to put bleachers in to sit people on. And uh, when I started researching it, my good friend Gary Osher uh, started showing me what was possible, including the London Theater, the uh, Dubai Theater, and, and others. Uh, these, these seats can be as luxurious as you want. Um, and Karen, my colleague Karen and I just met with a dealer representative from Pussy uh, Manufacturing who does the um, all of the seat, retractable seating, including for the Footprint Center, which is where the Phoenix Suns play. The Suns? And the Mercury. <laughs> Okay. And, and, and Murphy. Uh, I'm originally from Denver and Phoenix one our the Nuggets won the NBA, so <laughs> I guess there's a basketball team or something that plays in it. <laughs> um, so let's start out with the, the uh, and I don't plan on talking, I, what I want to do today is, is really have a round table discussion after a very short, hopefully what will be a very short presentation um, on where people are with respect to the uh, act. Um, again, remember our charter, develop and present strategic alternatives to our members, by our members, for the currently suspended fifth budget project at Mountain View, and this includes finding suitable space for the players. So, I want to start out with the first question. Start with Norm. Do you believe that Mountain View is in an acceptable condition? 
I always like to start out with unanimous. <laughs> oh, how many of you have been to a movie or a play at Mount View? Okay, lots of folks. Okay, how many of you believe that the current Mountain View Auditorium is suitable for the players? No. That's a unanimous. Unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. We started unanimous. We got back to unanimous. Uh, how many of the members here, the committee members, believe that finding a suitable venue for the players is a high priority item? Yes. Yes. Pretty much unanimous? Yes. Okay. And then the last one, I'm just going to leave for you to, to ponder on. How much would you be willing to spend for that venue? I'm not going to ask you to name a number, but each, each and every one of you will have, I hope, uh, some idea. It's kind of like when I go car shopping. I see exactly the car that I want. And then I look at my checkbook, and I say, what do you have to buy? <laughs> Okay, so turning to the Players Club, one of the things I think that we all recognize is that this club is an icon in the community. Uh, it's been around since the beginning of Sun City, uh, which is oh, 60, are we going on 83 years? No, 63 years. 63 years here, we're going on. been around for 62. Okay. So, a continuous club activity. So, it is kind of a, a, in the threads of the fabric of, of Sun City. Uh, and during that time, they put on more than 200 performances. Uh, and you think about that 200 performances, one of the things you have to realize is that for each performance, there is probably about seven times the amount of work in terms of hours that goes on in the performance. So this is not a, a uh, low impact sport. It, you, you have a lot of work. Also, uh, as part of the history, everyone should understand that since at least 1975, and I've talked to Ben Roloff, and he says it goes be before then, the Sun City players have been asking for a suitable venue. Uh, the venue that they're in today was at one time, I'm told, a laundromat. Uh, then became, went upscale into a roller rink and then was retrofitted, I believe, to allow for uh, theater performances. So I just want to keep that background in mind as we proceed. Um, I was also asked, what's the competitive, you know, outside of Sun City, what's the competitive landscape for live theater performances? And what I found was, of course, what you'd expect. That because of COVID, because of home entertainment, because of a number of factors, um, the audiences are suppressed. Uh, the New York Times said about half of pre-COVID levels. Um, and so that's not really surprising, is it? I mean, people are afraid to still, they still have that, that fear, the mentality of being a foot away from somebody's coffee. Um, so then I looked at what is the, the prevalence of standalone theaters in retirement communities like ours. Um, of the 144, 55 plus active communities, three have standalone theaters. Sun City West, Tunnelbrook, and West Valley uh, all have standalone theaters. So this kind of got me dropped off on uh, talking to people about a needs assessment. And one of the things that this... Yes, you did carry it on here. 
Do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> you know, how do we do it? <laughs> uh, so, and I'm going to be, you know, perfectly open and honest with it, that the view of this alternative is that the Sun City players have two distinct needs. Uh, one I'll call pre-production -pre and one I'll call production. Pre-production is everything from, uh, you know, starting with script, uh, review, business meetings, actor training, uh, auditions, rehearsals, uh, set design, set construction, you know, it, it, it's a pretty darn long list. And for those activities, this alternative looks at those as a standalone activity that needs dedicated space. You just can't move your costume to your set multiple times, either every other day, or take your set down at the end of the day. So I was kind of looking at this as, okay, so there's two distinct needs. The second need is for performance. You can't perform in a warehouse, uh, even though that's probably not what you're doing. Um, so you need a performing performing theater with theater seats, audiovisual equipment, and the whole nine yards. Um, so with that in mind, we started looking at retractable seating to convert Sundial into a multi-purpose theater um, when needed. What we all know is that Sundial is heavily used for things like bingo, line dancing, and other and so on. So these retractable seats, and we will see a picture here on the next page, full telescope scope back to five feet. So you're taking five feet out of your flat space to um, accommodate I think there are 448 seats. Um, so it's pretty amazing technology. Uh, whether it's right for us, I don't know. But I just want to present it as, as an option. Um, and it's not new technology. It's adopted in universities, theaters, world-class theaters, sports venues. You know, it, it's proven technology. And you can, I would say, you can name your price. You could go into that car dealership and I like they did in Dubai and say I want Italian leather, high back seats with two cup holders and you know this, that, and the other thing if you want to pull out your pocketbook. Or you can go much less expensive, all up on the other end, and you can go with polymer seats with just a little flimsy little uh, cushion in between are all sorts of variations. Um, if you turn the page, you will see a picture, which I think is worth a thousand words, uh, of what these seats look like. Now, they come in 19, 20, 21, and 22, and 24 inch uh, diameter. They can be mixed and matched, they can be designed. It's, a, it's all an engineering design thing based on what you want or need. Um, for the Sundial Auditorium, we did have the representative come out and look. And for the upholstered seats, which are, I think, two steps up from the, uh, is what we looked at today, I believe. For the upholstered seats, it was $312,000 for 448 seats installed. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Sundial, but you realize that Thursday, Friday, Saturday is used is dancing there, and a lot of times you've got when you have theater, they're going to be covering weekends, yep. so that's not going to work at some time. They have those indoor concerts too. Pardon? They have those indoor concerts as well there. Yep. So. Yes. Not only that, uh, I have not seen at uh, uh, Sundial uh, appropriate dressing rooms uh, currently at Mountain View. Uh, there are room for 
six people uh, on either side in the dressing room. The rest of us are out in the open, uh, changing costumes, etc. Uh, it is not the best environment along that line. Right. They have three dressing rooms there at Sundial. Uh, I have yet to see them. Yeah, they're in the, the back. Um, if you're facing the stage, there's two on the right and one on the first. And then there's also a storeroom that the dancers, so when we put on our shows, we use the three dressing rooms and the storeroom as a dressing room. But there are, there are, they are there. They're, they are small. They're small. Yeah. So, and you're crammed in there with six people. So, again, just to present, present the option, not to say, we're not, we're not here to say this will work or this won't work. We're here to say there's a hurdle. The hurdle is the usage, scheduling, and, and so on and so forth. Get it? Oh, we get it, yes. John, you said these, um, these well, retractable profiles five feet from the wall. How many rows is that? 13, Karen, what do you say? I think he said 13. 13 rows? Rows. Okay. 448 seats. 672 seats gross. Okay. So that's, uh, the other thing I'll tell you with these things is that they're not a um, slope floor. They have a three and a half inch step in between. So they're, they're not a, a slope. They are a step. Uh, but I want to, again, have it out there for your consideration. Okay, the first 13 rows are sloped, and then the second 13 are sloped more. No, no, so it's a tier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so you have your it, first 13 rows. Yes. Yeah. And that, I don't know, maybe that comes to be, what, six feet? The floor? Oh, so how high? Then how does the, the next set? The rake, the rake is the same, so the head overhead space is the same for the entire okay. set there. And it's all put together, it's not divided into two sections, like the first six rows and then the last eight rows. Okay. It's all in one. Okay. But there are, so there's two steps to get from one set of seats to the next set of seats. So those, each step is 4.75 inches. Okay. Give or take. How long would this take to set up? Two and a half minutes. <clears throat> so, um, I guess with that, again, let's look at the, our sheets. The pros and the cons. Which is next. Take a few minutes and just on a test basis, let's fill these out. And then go around the room and talk about pros and cons. Because this is what we're going to be doing. And if from here on in. reading the back of a wine bottle. There should be, the pros and cons should be in there.
sundial, or, and then maybe your performing arts theater would not need to be as extravagant as what is projected in this number two. That, yeah, that, that, it, it can also be used in another building. So one of the things that got us started on this was that when the um, option two was developed, well, the thought, the concern was, we're taking away flat space. And so we, they added a gym to just do nothing more than replace the flat space. So if that building were somehow fitted with this, you would have both the flat space and the uh, seating. Uh, and again, not in, it's not a matter of hours, it's a matter of minutes. And these seats are straight out from the stage, not on the ends of somehow? These, yeah, these are coming from the back wall forward. Okay. Yeah, no, that, just, again, that's just a preliminary mm -hmm. design. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can, something like this, and yeah. customize the yeah. configuration that you want. So, for instance, at the Footprint Center, they have a certain number of fixed seats in certain places, but then sort of in the corners, so it was set up for a Phoenix Mercury game, which is probably the smallest floor space that they need. They have a lot of, all of the seats were fully extended. Mm -hmm. But if you have a concert or something and you want to take away this block of seats or that block of seats, you can do that. So there are options for putting in. Mm -hmm. I was seats. just wondering the other angle. seats that were listed here, yeah. were they just straight, yeah. not side seats? No, these did not go into either of the other halls. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how far out from the back wall do these 13 rows extend? How far out? The, well, the, the initial design, again, this is, you yeah. only had one, one person look at this from design. The initial design was that you would put these six feet, you'd have a six feet hallway behind these seats. Yeah. So it'd be a total of 12 feet. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering how close does it get to the stage? Uh, that it can get as close as needed. It can be designed as close as needed. That's a function of the building use and the trade-offs that go with it with the building use. So to answer your question, you can have the first seat two feet from the stage. You can have the first seat 15 feet from the stage. That's just the design of where you put the start of the seats and where they extend to. I see. Now, uh, next question is, uh, if this was something for the players, uh, given that we have a, a separate shop for set design at this point, yes. uh, where would we set up the set and uh, would we be transporting it from the Mountain View area clear to Sundial, or what? Well, I mean, I, I have an idea. Um, I'll throw out, but there's probably a number of ideas, and that is that RCSC would. So if you were to set up a set, and for the, perform, for the, the part of the performance where you need that set on stage, you would, RCSC would move it. I see. Uh, I know as things are currently done at uh, Mountain View, uh, there are parts of the set that are actually constructed on the stage, so that uh, it uh, uh, it's not something that uh, is totally constructed in the shop and then moved, sure. full uh, built, but uh, is essentially constructed on the stage yes. uh, and that can take uh, three or four weeks uh, right. given the time and then the people involved are. Yeah, and, and again, you know, there's a, a, a big scheduling uh, hurdle in this in terms of how, how much time is any performing arts center. That's not unique to this. How much time is any performing arts center tied up with pre-production activity. Yes, well, part of the reason I'm asking the question is that uh, uh, in the design of the theater, the 
plant was in uh, phase two, mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a, a lift area for putting uh, essentially a, uh, a spot for uh, painted backdrops, okay. which could be switched fairly easily mm -hmm. uh, once they're painted. But uh, uh, this, as I see it, does not uh, have that capability at some value. Um, if I was just free thinking as kind of a wannabe engineer, I would say you would make those like roll up curtains. So that they would roll up and roll down, you'd have three or four roll up curtains. But I think what you're saying is you want to leave them completely extended and take them out of the view of the audience and drop another one down. That's uh, the typical construction yes, approach sir. for it. Uh, given the, uh, the roll up approach, uh, uh, you're likely to have flaking paint. Well, project it. What if you project that? Uh, projection. Uh, we've used back projection as well as uh, forward projection. Forward projection uh, runs into problems because you've got the uh, actors in front of the uh, screen. Uh, back projection has worked to a certain extent. And I don't know what the capability is within Sundial for that kind of an approach. Um, I, again, that would be something that would have to be explored. Um, it, as I understand it, we uh, use back, back production in our in our shows. Yeah, we use back production in our shows. I think Ted, my concern that I wanted to ask you is. When you're talking about building the sets and having them on stage, are you talking about securing them to the floor? Because I'm thinking about then the dancers. And again, we, we are a senior community, and we already had two people fall last year on stage. And I, I'm just like wondering, when you talk about the sets being on stage, what are you envisioning? Uh, well, currently we have platforms that uh, give different heights. Uh, and those are uh, uh, not secured to the floor, but they're, they've got sufficient weight that, that they don't move. Oh, I just wanted to make sure there was nothing, because I'm just, right now the floor that we have at Sundial is not the best for the dancers. And we're looking for like a nice dance, a portable dance floor that we can have put in. But my concern was if you were securing it, because I had talked to somebody and that's what they had mentioned, they wanted them secured to the floor, and I just envisioned little holes that our tap shoes are going to get caught in, we're going to go flying, and you know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just, uh, I was just curious as to what you were, you were envisioning. Well, it, it would be nice to have trap doors and so forth. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, uh, that's not uh, something that uh, we as uh, older uh, performers <laughs> are particularly interested in. <laughs> we understand. Karen, have you seen these seats? Uh, yes. How is the leg room? Between rows? So your knees aren't in the chair in front? Okay. Of course, you, know, you're, I, you, I, have, I, you have short legs. <laughs> uh, I, I did sit today behind John, mm -hmm. and with the rake that's there, so the head overhead mm -hmm. space there, he's much larger, taller than I am. And he was sitting. Nice catch. Boy, he's alive. <laughs> That's going to cost you five dollars. <laughs> so, so if, if the seat differential is about maybe a foot, my, that my seat is maybe a foot higher than his seat is, but if he's eight inches taller than I am, um, I said if I was trying to watch the basketball game, I would have to do a little bit of this mm -hmm. and this. So like now, now they, they, they do, they, they are, they will work with individual customized seating to make sure that everybody's line of sight is good. Uh, so they're so stacked one person. behind the other, not on a No, they can be, that you can have them staggered however you want. And okay. One way you can stagger two is to say I want two 19-inch seats and a 24-inch seat and then a 20-inch seat so that you have some variation that can help with the uh, line of sight as well. And what about handicap um, seating? Is there, I mean, I'm just thinking of the steps are they just going to put them there with a the wheelchair and have them just sit right up in front? Is that what is envisioned? I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, 
we didn't talk about ADA uh, proceeding. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they can, well, no, I'm going to take that up. If you have an entrance from the top, you know, you can put it on the top, top or mm -hmm. bottom or side. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what the answer is. Mm -hmm. But there's no entrance from the top to the only entrance. Yeah, there's no entrance. So there would be no way to get a wheelchair up oh, into okay. any of these yeah. seats. Yeah, Where do you expect all the dancers to go if they do this at sundial? Where do you expect all these dancers to go if they do a theater at sundial? Uh, Where are we going to go? Not? You're not even thinking about that. Why not? Yeah, I said, mm -hmm. one of the hurdles is scheduling, and so you have to really dive down to see if yes is viable. You can't get angry because the, you have to investigate this in, in little steps and say, well, maybe the scheduling doesn't work. It's already a problem there. This is going to be a bigger problem when you start adding theater seating to Sundial. You're going to make a lot of enemies in this girl. <laughs> well, you. I don't appreciate the threat. But well, I'm I, just saying. I will tell you that we are we are we're going to investigate all hurdles. I will tell you that we've already investigated other alternatives. I just want you to think about that. Yeah, I, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. you, there, there's no, there's no, you know, this is just going to be popped on because we investigated it. It's going to be. Here's the here's the hurdles. Hey, this is insurmountable. Take her off the table and move on. Now, yes. Is there um, I, number one? I think this is a phenomenal idea. I think the, the fact that you found this information and was able to this quickly get this information out, I think it's it will make the sundial much more usable for a number of other groups um, and much more pleasurable to use for movies or dance things or something. I don't know, I agree with, I don't know that it's going to replace the um, need for the center, for yeah, the performing arts center, but the fact that this is available for the sundial is going to make the sundial so much better yeah, if it were something you sundial. could do in addition to maybe a performing arts um, thing, maybe just not as big, but that's an outstanding idea. It yeah, no, no. And again, we're just throwing out ideas. And uh, just an example of the okay. large group that this is how we use um, Sunday auditorium. Okay. It gives you the idea of where you need the space because of the different styles you're dancing and things. Oh. <laughs> Could, in addition to the building, be part of this, the northeast corner of that sundial is just gravel area. You, know, you come out the one exit to the east side of the stage, and there's gravel area there. It's not being utilized for anything but landscaping and gravel. Uh, and for the space they need to build sets to have proper dressing rooms and that sort of thing. I don't know. It's a possibility. Um, yes, I get this. And this is, uh, She's again, you may also say, um, I'll say, I'll, you may also say, you know, yeah, this is okay for Sundown, or yeah, this is okay for a multi purpose view. So if you built a flat floor space with a decent um, stage, dressing room, so on and so forth. This would also allow platform use. That's all I'm saying. I think we all, we should all be aware we're not going to get everything that we want. And it's kind of like, what is the best use of the money that addresses most of what it is that we're looking for? Now, the retractable seating, I think that's awesome. I mean, I think that's an awesome idea. I'm concerned about trying the logistics of the scheduling, which I brought up last week. Yeah. Yes. Because the, the amount of rehearsals you have, the amount of rehearsals we require around with the dancing um, with the other clubs, it is going to make that club's office go insane. <laughs> I, I, I envision it now. You mean further? I've been there every week because my teachers are 
are constantly changing things, and, and I just see a problem with that. Yeah. Um, but I do think it, this is a, this is a viable option that you know right now. The, yeah. For the only problem I see with it uh, is the ADA requirement. Uh, we usually have uh, um, six, eight uh, people in wheelchairs uh, come in uh, for each performance. Right. And um, if we don't have ADA compliant seating, uh, we open ourselves up to being sued uh, mm -hmm. by uh, uh, anyone uh, who uh, desires it. Uh, as I understand it, the uh, current law on ADA is that anybody can sue and uh, uh, get a, uh, a settlement from you uh, if you're not ADA compliant. I don't know. And uh, uh, there are a fair number of small businesses that have had to uh, uh, pony up in that kind of situation. Uh, and I'd hate to see us in that kind of uh, uh, predicament ourselves. I, I would say that's another one. I'm with you in the sense of it's a great idea for Sundown, but it does not replace the need for an actual theater, which you would be able to use. Exactly. And have it the way it should be with all the things that need to be the way it is. So Sundown, I mean, we all go to Sundown, we go to all these places. And, and maybe, maybe it's a consideration of the, the retractable season. It's not going to replace what we are talking about. John, I don't know how, how that room at Sundown works. Can you, is there a, a, a wall that you can partition off the ends? There is. Sides, yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you considered acoustics there? You know, it's I, not the best. Well, I, I've been to concerts there. I know, so it's, I. Uh, it's, it's very good. I guess the other thing, when we talk about acoustics, and I don't mean to be part of the manager here. All right, <laughs> oh, come on. Because you were going there. I'm in the land of trucks. I'm hard of hearing. What? What? <laughs> Most of us are. So it's, uh, and this is recreational. <coughs> um, if it were, you know, you could say you're going to put on Hamilton or Frozen or Nutcracker, I would say, yeah, those are all very, very important to have those dialed in perfectly. Uh, in my, again, not to be <coughs> in my mind, uh, if I can hear it, it's good acoustics. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's the problem. For you to hear it, it's probably good because you're getting the sound bouncing. Mm -hmm. For other people that don't have an hearing issue, mm -hmm. sometimes that gets to be annoying because the sound is bouncing. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a balancing. Yeah. Yeah. There's a balancing. I mean, there's concerts we haven't gone to simply because of the sound bouncing. Yeah. It gets very annoying. So yes. the, the ADA compliancy for stadium seating says they need to be dispersed throughout the area. Mm -hmm. They need to be available at all levels and price points if we're just basically charging one price anyway. Mm -hmm. um, has to have a companion seat next to them okay. and um, a comparable line of sight. It does also mention that the aisle seat one percent of them should have an armrest that can move or be removed okay. um, for people with low mobility, not in a wheelchair. And the first offense is seventy-five thousand dollars, and each subsequent one is one hundred and fifty thousand for being non-compliant. How are we compliant today? At Pardon me. How are we compliant today? At oh, I have no idea. So think, the, so think about Harkins Theater. You own the big Harkins Theater. It sits like two hundred and fifty people. All of their like wheelchair handicap is at the bottom before you even go up. There is no handicap accessibility once you start going up the steps. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. All of the handicap accessibility is at the bottom before you start going to that bottom row. So if you just think generically, Arkin Theater or AMC Theater, yeah. they are all handicap compliant without having a need for wheelchairs to go up a ramp to the top of the floor. Yeah. Anyway, I think that would be a safety issue. Yeah. I wouldn't want someone pushing it. John, one big thing we didn't think about is bingo. 
Yeah, this leaves. Uh, That's a be a real nightmare. Yeah, if you collapse it to five feet, uh, the bingo tables would not come out to. I mean, this, what you would have though, uh, I have to be honest with you, is you know where they sell the snacks in the back. They'd have to be real, real okay. Mm -hmm. Well, not only that, but the players pretty much need the area several weeks, the stage area. Right. And now you're trying to get bingo in there once a week at least. I know, the scheduling is it's yeah. going to be horrific. It's horrific. Um, and so. And that you really can't do. They make a lot of money for charity. <laughs> Some grand each yeah. night. Yeah. So, you know, again, it's, a, it's an option to consider in any building. Uh, these can be carpeted. They, if if the concern was that you're going to build a something that not here that was an approved theater, but not on the level of option two, you could have a combination of flat floor space and approved theater all in one building. That's that's really the genesis of the whole whole idea was that we got down the, the path on this flat floor space because we we're taking it away. This makes it more purpose. Right? Whether it's workable or not, um, we have to go through and brainstorm it. And then uh, the one idea that I, I've had, I brainstormed until the, the you know, check with the lawyer and then determined, no, nope, there's a deep restriction. Maybe perfect, but you're not gonna get that by a deep restriction. So, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I think the players, they deserve a new performing arts center that fits what they need and not trying to. Sure. But not just the players. Any yeah, performing arts. All, yeah, all the dancers, the. All, yeah, I think we've got to be careful about saying to the community, we're building this for the players because. Yeah. I mean, we don't want to build a fifteen dollar million dollar building for a hundred and twenty people. Uh, we got to be careful about saying that. Right. Um, it should be. Uh, who, who will serve a uh, couple of thousand or more a year? But uh, uh, there are that few of us at the moment. Yeah. Uh, we have been larger. Uh, yeah. And, and you have no idea which way you're going to go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. don't think we should advertise quite that way. I agree with you. It should not just be. No. For the Sun City players, because it's oh. a negative connotation that's coming out in the community. Right. It's and not, no offense, Tim, I mean, but performing it's arts just yes, it should it, it should be stressed as just performing our yes. center. Right. Because right now there's so many people that are like, I am sick of the Sun City players, <laughs> yada yada yada, and it's yes. not just for you. And, and uh, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, yeah. every uh, Fourth of July time, we uh, have the uh, the band there for a. Uh, uh, Patriotic concert. Uh, I'd love to see uh, choral groups there, uh, that kind of thing. Exactly. And that's what we need to start talking it up as a performing arts center. Definitely. Of which Sun City Players is just a part of. Just yes. get rid of that word theater. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Performing arts center. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I haven't been personally involved, but uh, there has been a, uh, a meeting of various performing arts clubs within the Sun City uh, environs that uh, could and would be uh, interested in using that kind of facility. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe there were 11 or 12, something of that sort, uh, clubs that qualified in that kind of a yeah, situation. Uh, I, I, I hadn't expected to be here uh, in this spot uh, yet. Uh, uh, I thought I had a, uh, a week or two before Bill was gone, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Surprise! Yes. Yes. So there may even be another group that we haven't talked about yet that has not form, that will form, because there oh, is a performing arts Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I know we've had the, uh, the Coral Ears just join us. Uh, mm -hmm. They were hit hard by uh, COVID. Uh, we're unable to maintain the, the 25 necessary, so they've joined us, and uh, I'm sure they would be more than happy to uh, use a, uh, a facility with good acoustics. Mm -hmm. 
We have yes. time for our next kind of a next information I want to hand out. Oh yes, please. Okay, please. So I'll make some more copies if you would like. Yes. If you don't have enough copies, uh, please make me some over there. So this is another alternative. I worked on this after our project meeting. Wow, you're as quick as I am. <laughs> Why do I the foot the footloose <laughs>
how much basketball is used. I, I happen to be a, I bowl almost it's daily. So I'm kind of biased to bowling. But that doesn't mean I want uh, other things not to happen. Attach resort, resort pool to the lap pool so we can share the water and equipment and maintenance equipment. You can attach pools and then separate the pools with the decorative wall for noise separation and visual separation. And downsizing the pack and the oversized atrium will leave room for more new parking area. Just an idea, these are just thoughts. You, Sue and I did this. Yes. <laughs> I know where I got it. This is where we're coming from. Yes. Sue and I. Um, yes, we, um, we want to eliminate the fly. It makes the building look a little more like it fits within the area. Mm -hmm. I know you'd love the fly. I get it. But back projection, I think, could work. We, and with technology, I think it's getting better. Mm -hmm. um, the the um, atrium, whatever they call that thing, that is way oversized for what we need. And again, it's, there's a lot of empty air up there that we're cooling. Um, I like the sharing of the pools. We talked about that. And regards the basketball, um, I don't have anything against basketball, but maybe maybe if we can satisfy pickleball, tennis, theater, Love and everybody else in the world, maybe basketball has to wait till late Um I would rather make eight groups happy, and one can hate me for a few years, <laughs> and we'll get you later. We know you're out there, we know there aren't great numbers, but we're, we're not going to forget you. <laughs> I see no mention of mini golf here. I didn't put mini golf in there because I was thinking about it. Because I didn't think about it. No, we shouldn't involve mini golf. We need to keep as much of it existing Possible. It's not getting much. Because I live that way. Because all they need is new carpet and it's ready to go. It's, uh, and it's highly used. Yes, well, I think the office is talking about making an ADA course and it's going to take a tremendous amount of space over what's there now. That's only if you build a new one. If you just refurbish the existing one, there's no ADA requirements. Right. Exactly. And that's where the argument is. That's all we got. Yeah, yeah, there's like so much more room for that. And let's not throw an ADA make off. No, that, no, that no. just adds more costs. <laughs> I did hear one gentleman, and he's not here. I think it was maybe the junior not here. Um, I think this, this is the big one. Um, <laughs> so that, yeah, Mountain View Pool doesn't have to be replaced. It's just some plumbing that has to be replaced. <laughs> The deck needs to be replaced. Yeah, the, the deck and the, uh, and yeah, the deck. Yeah, right. Yeah. Completely replaced, not just resurfaced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was also some kind of plumbing outside of the pool. Yeah, the pool Underneath the deck, the areas of the cool pool, don't, they, they leak really bad. They're out. under the deck. Under the okay. Deck. He seemed to think they were not under the deck. They were outside of the pool area. They're outside of the, they're not no, outside, outside of the, the pool. They're under yeah. the deck of the pool. Okay. Just repeating what I heard was saying. Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah that was Jim. Jim is not here. So, so now when somebody throws out an idea like this, how do you want to proceed? Let it go around the room and say what you think? Oh, I call, I didn't call. I checked the Wikipedia, if you can believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little while ago. And the Peoria Performing Arts Center is 175 seats. Okay. Uh, it doesn't give me square footage. It was $13 million in 2005. And they had two classrooms, three dressing rooms, a green room, a costume shop, and a construction shop, as well as some offices. And they also have that fly as well. That's the price range. Yeah. And it's very nice. It is? Yep. It's very classy. And I don't disagree. Yeah, and, and just to let you know, the only reason I ever brought up the barrier uh, site was for transition because we knew that the Mountain View was going to go away and they were struggling with how to, how to do plays while Mountain View was start. I mean, I, of course, I love this because you dreamt it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just so think it's, re yeah, it's reasonable seat size. I don't know how many seats you can get 20,000 square feet. We'd have to have that figured out. I don't know. 
that they have 227 so 300 square feet. Yeah. And, and actually, I mean, I, so the plan is that next week I will be presenting sort of the other side to this, is that, okay, if we don't do the retractable seating in order to create theater space and we build the path, what would be some options? And I'll be looking at what we have, what the Stardust Theater is, some more data about that, the Pebble Creek, and the Green Valley Theater outside of Tucson. So that's, that's scheduled for next week. The, uh, just to let you know, in the current footprint, uh, that 20,000 feet, there's probably, just by squaring off that building, you get to about 13,000 square feet. Okay. Yeah, so, it, it, because, you know, I don't know if you know that building, but it was built when the Apollo space program was going on. <laughs> it's a space capsule. And why anybody, you know, only in the minds of architects do they do that. Um, but just by squaring it off, you get about 13,000 feet. No, not additional. Total. I'm sorry. Total square foot. No, not. <laughs> the one thing this committee needs to focus on is money. Not just the money and cost to build it, but to maintain it. And that's, I want to make sure that the committee keeps that in mind all the time because we would like to have all kinds of things, we all live here, we pay for all this stuff, but we want to also leave behind something long term, which will be maintainable with not having to go up in fees 10 years from now. Yeah. Maybe that's the key. And I think it satisfies a lot of different groups. It doesn't satisfy everybody, somebody's yeah. not going to be happy, mm -hmm. but everybody has to give a little. So is, do we have to remove the existing pool completely? Okay, so there is, there are viable options of maintaining. Okay, yes. I think Anita had a great uh, couple points last week where she was like, if you go with the fly that's 45 feet high, how do you change the light bulb? How do you, how do you, how do you do that? Yeah, the special equipment, but the special training, the, 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 the additional the insurance, the, so yeah, so now you're talking additional cost either renting or buying um, and the we've got a scissor length that we use in the current facility because that's what they use to change the bolts now. But it's not four and a half stories. Right. The new building as proposed is forty five feet. That's four and a half stories. There's a, just a lot of logistics and cost involved that you don't necessarily readily think about. Yeah. And it's maintenance and it's longevity. And we think of uh, LED versus incandescent. Uh, that makes a, a heck of a lot uh, that helps. cheaper for uh, both maintenance and uh, mm -hmm. uh, actual uh, Yes, that does help. So I'm, I'm not in construction, but what is the time frame typically once an option is decided on to build this performing arts center? slash redo mountain. What are we looking at? Two, two things. I have an engineer. And I was actually built several naval okay, submarine bases. You know, you know a guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I actually built King's Bay Naval Submarine Base, the most highly classified base in the world. Um, two things in today's world. One is availability of people to build it. That's in today's world. Okay. Second is the availability of materials to build. Those are the two biggest things, cost-wise, human beings and materials. So in Cement, a, sand, those kinds of things. In a, an ideal society, we have all the resources, we have enough manpower, what would it take? Between Eight. nine months to a year. Okay. 18 months to 24 months. I'm just sitting here thinking about <laughs> the Sun City players and where will they be displaced to? Is that sundial? I don't know. Oh, that, that's a transition. Oh, that's, 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 that's just the end. Okay, I mean, yeah, I was just kind of curious as to how long the players would be displaced. Yeah, yes. But yeah. that's something the players would have to say, are they, how are they going to deal with, I mean, uh, that one I'd say is akin to changing the wheels of your car while it's Moving. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> Figure it out. Let us know. I have a question for maybe Kevin. 
we have an architect and we have a contractor. Are we locked into those two? We could walk away from them and find someone different. Because this is kind of, if we come up with a different plan, it has to be redrawn. It has to be redrawn. We have to have new prints. We have to have all this new stuff. Is our, and is our existing con architect and contractor want to get involved with us throwing away what they had and starting over? And if that happens, what's the time frame? They're not going to care because they've already been paid for more That's true. But they're not going to get paid for more work. Not just waiting for us. 
Okay. I guess the other thing you, you want to try to have a good handle on as you discuss these things is the cost. As much as you can. Um, and, you know, going through that option to get some good indications of what costs were. We talked to another architect who believes those are very understated. Um, and so you want to have, I don't know, maybe have a cost estimator on the team that you know, tells you per square foot what Marshall Swift would, you know, or what the current building costs are and, and all of that stuff. Because I don't think the last thing you want to do as a committee is come up with a tiny mite recommendation that we can't afford. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Earlier, you all decided that two was not good. Right. So I don't know what you're describing now. Are we essentially going back to one? So I would say 1.5. 1.5? <laughs> yeah. Between one and two. Karen, you were at Stardust on the tour. And I know they have their, their theater. Do they also have a black box theater there? Well, they have a room that could double as a black box theater. They have a fully enclosed rehearsal room that's mm -hmm. behind the stage that's more than half the size of the stage. It's about 65%, I think, as I recall. So one of the things that's really curious about the Stardust Theater is that their auditorium the seating is less than a third of the total that's size. Really so mm -hmm. over like some 70% of it is what they call the stage plus back 40. So they get there just under 300 seats in there, and it's less than a total of 10,000 square feet. But and they do have dedicated rehearsal space outside of their stage. Mm -hmm. No. no. Well, yes, yes. 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 this yes. rehearsal room behind it. Okay. That's something so that would, that would so also. Their, their storage is off-site that they actually have in that back 40. is a large wood shop where they mm -hmm. make all their sets. So forth, and it's a little dock that pulls up right from the back there. They have two costume rooms. They have multiple dressing room areas. They have, I mean, it's a lot. It's two, two thirds, more than two thirds of the total size is devoted to stage and back forty. No. Because that would allow for some rehearsals to go on while one club sure. might be using the stage, the other club could at least be rehearsing in a, in a black box or rehearsal space. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I've uh, been to uh, the. Sun uh, City West uh, Theater, and uh, it, it's a nice theater. It's nice to have uh, both sitting in uh, for performances and backstage. So you are comfortable with that kind of concept? I'm not saying the exact duplicate of the concept, but that's something that's like that. something uh, similar to that. Uh, the biggest problem I see is the size of the, uh, the audience and what it does. Uh, it's uh, a little yeah, that's small for okay. what we do uh, ordinarily. Uh, let's, let's talk one first time. So if we, if we figured uh, something on the order of 350 or 400 seats in that kind of concept, that would work for us as I see it. Tad, what if you had to throw in an extra couple performances? That's the way uh, We had, uh, had uh, some Thursday uh, matinees uh, that uh, died with COVID. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And those were not as well attended as the uh, uh, evening performances in the Sunday matinee. But uh, uh, Do I, don't know, I don't know whether the uh, Actors would be uh, uh, that much in favor of traditional performances. You probably have to increase your membership. Yeah. And like I was saying, yeah. Anita, that's if we had a very small seating capacity, we normally have between like six to seven hundred that attend our show. If we're asking our seniors, yeah. <laughs> you know, and we all are, <laughs> I mean, to come out there and dance four days for four shows or twice in one day, that is a lot. Yes. So, I mean, I, I, I can see 350 because, you know, two shows I think <coughs> we can do, but anything beyond two shows from our club would be a lot yeah. to ask of them. Yeah. Do you ever see we've, we've been doing six uh, and seven with the first and that day. Do you ever see yourself as a year-round performing group? Uh, 
been in uh, probably uh, 17 shows myself. I'm just afra I'm afraid we're going to have from May to September with that being building used. not being used. That's, that's a huge investment to have to sit there. What could we do in the summer in that building tractable space? Well, I would say high school commencements. Well, yeah, we could rent it out for other things, but movies, what can we do locally? Retractable seats in there. Movies, lectures? I know our population drops like a rock. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think so anymore. Have you noticed the traffic on 99th Avenue now? Yeah. I always say, where are those numbers? Or what is these people? That, that was one of the problems that we had with the so-called capacity study. Yeah. yeah. The facts of life are that we lose 45 to 50 percent of our people, our snowbirds. So I don't care what you do, you're going to have a half-empty city for a good portion of the year. A lot of people don't come here until after the holidays for family reasons. A lot of people leave here prior to income tax so they can get home and do their income tax. <laughs> That's the population we have, besides being 74 years old <laughs> and wanting to do everything in the morning because that's the only time we have energy. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're herd animals and that's just what, what we are. And so we have to adapt. And the fact that most of our facilities are empty from March and April through September, it's just, yes. that's us. Yes. It's just and we're never going to change that. Oh, but that is likely to change. It's likely to change because the people that are coming down, you hear it all the time, put your meetings at a different time. We're still working for a living. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen is the people who need to keep working for a living go. Yeah, they, they can't leave in the summertime. <laughs> they still have to work. There, but that, that opens up a whole new can of worms because Right now, all of our clubs close at 5 o'clock in the afternoon because yeah. that's happy hour. But, <laughs> but, most of, but most of the new people coming in are going to have to work full time or part time, which means we're going to have to have the clubs open until 9 o'clock at night. And now that's going to cause all kinds of problems. And one more thing people are living longer and working longer. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Where does the board come from on a renting facility? Would the board be supportive of renting facility, that performing arts center? Or is that something we prefer not to do? I think that's something we have to see what the what the, the permissions are. We have to see mm -hmm. if we have a history of doing that. We have to begin to know what to charge for something yeah. like that. I'm not saying it can't be done, I'm just saying we have to answer it. But you're flexible. In the past, the rule of thumb has been yeah. that uh, outside groups would not limit activities of inside groups. Right, but I'm thinking in the summer, where we don't see that. You can shoot a cannon down there. Yeah. Um, maybe that would be a time where a high school would want to use it, or a church, or who knows what. Or our political parties every two right. years. Yeah. <laughs> Do, does the committee want to? Uh, you have to have great have, insurance, Matt. <laughs> have comments from the audience, or do you want to continue the discussion? I, I just told. I think that this is ought to be considered as an alternative. Yes. Just as uh, some that is. Uh, so then we get all the alternatives together and make a decision some place way down the line. Way down. Okay. Do no, we not have them? You got two months. <laughs> Do we have At other my age, that's way down the line. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 yes. Yeah, in the summertime, if you think beyond performing arts to lectures, yes. lifelong yeah. learning, all of that kind of stuff, yeah. that yeah. should be point. easier and cheaper to bring in, and there would be interest in people doing it. Or like a like speaker that. series. A speaker series. You know, I don't know. I mean, but if you could get four or five speakers then space them out a little bit, that would also then... You know, the library... Uh, I just worry about farming out too much of our property. I try to get a bowling lane sometimes, and it's all outside people and outside leagues. Okay. And the same thing people complain about golf. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if our residents pay their annual fees, they should be the priority. I'm not... I'm not a... 
you know, I don't mind sharing facilities if they rent it, but it has to be at a price that is going to make us a profit, and we must always uh, have our residents and their needs above the needs of outside people. And I've seen in the paper where golfers can't even get on the days they want because other people who don't live in Sun City are using that. And I can tell you, I had that happen many times with me with bowling. I couldn't even get on a, a lane because it was all these people from outside saying how reasonable the food was over there at Lakeview Bowling Alleys. So, you're, you're so I, and the other thing I'd like to say is, mm -hmm. Have you sat in those cold little chairs for two hours? Because many of our people, this is comfortable for like an hour, but people, we have many people with many physical uh, illnesses and back problems and all kinds of problems, and they come to our shows, and they say, I can't come to your shows anymore because I can't tolerate sitting in your seats. Yes. So I would like to say that, and, and um, that was just uh, just a couple things I was thinking about with regard. The other thing is, when we broke down our set for our last show, Old Hands, mm -hmm. which we had about 1,200 people come and see. We were very pleased with that. That was our show in March. Um, our CSC people said, no, that's a club. We don't handle helping you break down your sets. We had to hire a moving company to help move our set back to our shop. So I think for anyone to assume that our CSC is going to be able to step up, A, they may not have the manpower, and B, they told us that's not their job. Right. So there's a lot of other variables that need to be thought about. Exactly. It has, it has to be a whole package. Mm -hmm. It can't. Yeah. Did, did you have a... It, it, yeah. Yes, I did. I was curious because I was hearing about the, all the effort that went into building the set. With the different backdrops and maybe it's rolling around stages, but I was really surprised to hear that there might be only one or two performances. I thought there would be, it sounds like an awful lot of effort going in. Yes, uh, we usually have six or seven performances. Okay. Six uh, is the current number uh, we have had, and that's Friday and Saturday evening, two Sunday weekend. matinee, two weekends. Okay, uh, that's And we have had a, uh, a Thursday matinee between the two. Okay, good. Okay. Is there another? Yes, I'm sorry, yes. Yes? Yeah, uh, my name is Bruce Halverson. I'm the president of the Men's Club, Sundown Men's Club. Yes. And we're obviously very concerned <laughs> because we do have, we're, you know, we house on Thursdays at least 600 people. Um, we have a lot of equipment in that room. We have storage um, right up our rooms there. Uh, we're concerned that the seating proposal mm -hmm. is going to cost us um, seats. Um, we do donate all our proceeds, you know, 80000 a year, every year. It goes to the local charity, it goes to the Red Center. The Red Center gets half of it, or you know, half yeah. the other clubs get the rest. Uh, we're concerned. Um, I'm listening to this. I do want to become part of this committee because uh, I hear what's going on here and I guess we're very concerned. Okay. We have some input because no one has talked to us at all. Right. This is the first time we've ever discussed this alternative, so I think it's appropriate for you to be on the So I are there any other alternative ideas that people have yeah had there's had? a whole post okay uh, and again if if anybody anybody not necessarily you somebody you know has an alternative even if they can type it up in 15 minutes with my good friend Dr. Jack <laughs> is there a good on board to discussion and ideas because we're looking at these as brainstorms Okay, and once we get this brainstorming going, you're going to start, I think, feeding off each other. You're going to discover the hurdles, 
All right. I mean, this is a this is a hurdle. It may be insurmountable. So and so go explore what that hurdle is and report back. Uh, and th in that process, I hope that what we're able to do is move it down to something that the perfect compromise. We know what's happening. <laughs> so <laughs> everybody gets something, but know what's happening. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Sun City Grand has abused retractable seating for quite a few years now. Yeah. They do roll it in and out. They don't store it on the floor. Yeah. Right. And then the other comment I have is Sun City West, for short people, the pitch is not high enough. It's okay. just the floor is too flat. Granted, you don't have steps. You just have a walk, inclined walkway. So it's a trade-off. Yeah. But I'd rather take steps and see. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe we should go see some city grants the same way. They'd have to be having a production to have them out. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't see it. I, I understand there are, uh, uh, what do you call those, uh, tiers? Or yeah, it's retractable. I mean, every seat has arms. They're actually wider than seats at other theaters. Okay. And, uh, it is like a two step for each row. Okay. And they have a handicap at the front. They do set up some flat floor. Mm -hmm. oh, and there, there's a, a, a lot of different options for you all to you know, consider. And to, uh, I think, Kimmy, yeah, what you said is, is, is key. No one's going to get everything that they want. And you're going to, you're going to have a ceiling. That ceiling is called money. <laughs> and I bumped my head enough against that ceiling to know that, you know, uh, not to get my expectations up too high, um, even though I would vote that my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you can't afford the insurance. <laughs> yeah. I have another finance question. Is, does the RCOC have a rule against sponsorship from companies? Can <sighs> um, I jump in for one second? Because we asked for a legal opinion on that a couple of years ago. So we have to go back and look at what the legal opinion is. Okay. I wish we didn't have. Our university that I worked at got a sponsorship through Coca-Cola, and they had to have their name on the wall. This is on a four-story building. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a classroom building. It's huge. And uh, there's a big mural on it that was put on that building. And Coca-Cola's name is on that building. It's about this long and this high. It's in the bottom corner. <laughs> I, matter of fact, by now, yeah, by now there's probably, and they approved it. They were happy with it. But by now, it's probably covered with sugar. I don't know. But, <laughs> and they, I, think, I think we have some tax issues yeah. with accepting that. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that would work. We have a tax yeah. issue. Otherwise, I would have. Open the Chevrolet Theater. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm new. Uh, just taking taking over for Scott while he's gone. But has any any of us looked at other 55 and better communities for that downtime? And what they might do for that empty space in within here or in the country? You have okay. Okay. I know that in Sun City West they say that there's very little usage from May through August, but that's when they do all of their regular and preventive maintenance. Mm -hmm. it, so. okay. Uh, well, you, you talked about sponsors and even before, but we've actually explored and talked about grant money and things. Yeah. Of course, so we've approached that before. Mm -hmm. we, we do accept, we do apply for so, and we do accept grants. So that's a Okay. Another possibility is some other avenue. What about the Del Webb Foundation? Has anybody reached out to them in Prescott? Hmm. I don't know. I would think we would need to know what we would want to. Mm -hmm. Usually, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. But they may. Yeah. But and maybe that's a takeaway, so we'll talk to a takeaway is that we'll talk to a good lawyer and see how far we can push out on the in the past, I think we've got some pretty hardline negative things as far as putting Coca-Cola on there. Uh, there are a lot of fine arts performing arts grants to the federal government. Yes. Right. There's a bazillion of dollars. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So those those things are all for us to explore to come up. But like with the Rubik's Cube, something where only one color is out of place on each side. Does anybody know a grant writer? I never took those classes. <laughs> <laughs> they were always offered and I never took them. I know, I work on one, but I don't think I can't do it. Yeah. Um, okay, in, in terms of uh, how you want to proceed, uh, the, the next meeting, Karen's going to um, share some information about the three existing performing arts centers in uh, retirement communities, what they do, what they activities they have in there, how big they are. Uh, everyone knows some of the West, uh, but then we're really into the thick of it as far as alternatives are concerned, and uh, we're looking for anybody that has a an idea, no matter how rough it is, uh, to uh, help, that we can help out. We'll, we will present ideas as well as strong, strong men, and, uh, you know, kind of jumping off points for discussion. And um, I think that process then will um, help us to kind of put pen to paper. Is there any way possible, I know Ms. Karen has her laptop or tablet going over there. I'm going to be gone for like four weeks. I don't need to participate, but I would love to at least, instead of having to watch the video afterwards, yeah. is there like a Zoom capability that we could? So what we're using today for the very first time, and Steve Oaks is on with us. I just asked him whether he'd like to say or ask him maybe because he would have the potential to do that. Um, but we've set up with Microsoft Teams, and so we will, for each of the subsequent meetings coming up, have a Microsoft Teams link. So the deal is that during COVID, Zoom made a fortune, obviously, but from what we've sort of been told, Zoom kind of has rested on its laurels, and Microsoft Teams has figured out how do we actually make this an even better virtual program, which is why we're using uh, Microsoft Teams now instead of Zoom. And it doesn't require anything from you apart from we. Let us know. We will send you the link, Perfect. and you can pull the link up on your browser. We had a little bit of difficulty with that today, but somehow I think when Steve got, I don't know, he said he got a pass code or something, he was actually able to do it. We were hoping that he could do it more easily than that. So he's on with us right now. Steve, would you like to say hi to everybody? <laughs> 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 I would just love to part, at least be able oh, sure. to, to participate in this while I'm in New York for a moment. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like what I did want to get a webcam for this TV mm -hmm. and have our CNC set it up. Because I can't even see this. You can't even see this. You don't mind, I would like to, I know that Jim is willing to say something, but we had actually talked about how we wanted to handle the next phase of brainstorming. So we feel like up until now, you know, we were very interested in everything that all of us thinks and has to say about this, but a lot of it has been laying the foundation. These are things that we know, and let's make sure that we all know the same things and that we don't just know things that aren't so, right? And, and so the idea was that I don't think that my presentation will take necessarily more than a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes, I haven't put it together yet, I don't know. But, um, that starting next week, we wanted to invite you to come with ideas. So you kind of uh, jumped the gun on this. You're uh, <laughs> kind of a shark here <laughs> um, in making your presentation. So we want to just throw that over to everybody. And I, this is pretty much what we were thinking we would like to see, is something that doesn't have to be a comprehensive thing that solves all the problems. You know, not the, the last development at both Lakeview and Mountain View. But something sketched out in broad strokes like this. And give us your ideas. And so the idea with brainstorming, of course, is brainstorming is supposed to be a non-critical process. So when somebody comes, so if next week I just want to invite anybody that has an idea to feel free to come. Have something similar to this. If you want to do a PowerPoint presentation, you can. If you would like to do a PowerPoint presentation and don't know how to do it, we're glad to help you with that. Um, but to get some ideas that we would put up, and what we as a group would do, as a committee would do there, and this is really important at this stage, is 
to ask questions that are clarifying, but not to ask questions or make statements that are critical. Okay, so well, that's, that kills brainstorming when that happens. So we want everybody to feel like they can come up and make, and make their suggestions, come up, this is one way I think we could solve this problem, or this is what my vision is for all of Sun City. I think, you know, you know for, I want to do four, four rec centers and change them all around, whatever. Whatever you have, but we do want you to feel like you should be thinking in those terms, and um, I mean, that's very, very critical to the next phase of this, is coming up with alternatives. So um, please do feel free. And if you do have something that you would like to present, you can just come, but it would help us in terms of planning for the meeting if you would let John or me or Jeff know in advance so that we have a little bit of an idea. If nobody has anything that the plan for the next meeting will look different than if we have five people that are coming that would all like to make a presentation. Okay, does that, does that sound okay? I know, uh, it's a little early now, but one of the things that we need to keep in mind is, and it's been said a couple times, is the cost. So if we come up with several concepts, we need to go to an architect and just say, what would, uh, what would it cost to do this? What would it cost to do that? And what would it cost to do this one? And uh, we did that briefly with a, an architect recently. If it's a thousand dollars a square foot, then we're going to be limited to how many square feet we can do, maybe more so than we we're expecting. So we just need to deal on the real world of what things cost, and, especially, and what it costs to maintain it. One of the things we didn't talk about from Sun City West is they have light specialists. They've got. There's a, there's a lot of things that come with running a theater mm -hmm. that we don't have sure, right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. Well, we do have volunteers who handle yes. lights and uh, sound and so forth, but... Uh, but somebody's got to maintain that equipment, which is not cheap. Yes, and we've had to replace equipment recently yeah, uh, because the uh, uh, government has uh, assigned uh, wavelengths uh, gotcha. uh, different uh, areas that we were using for microphones, wireless microphones. So uh, uh, it, it's been interesting. <laughs> Jean? I was just going to remind everyone here, but also you have an audience that will be watching on YouTube, that if you are going to do presentations, it's helpful to have copies made, uh, perhaps on a thumb drive, uh, just so that we can plan ahead and be prepared for both those people in-house and then I can put anything necessary up on the website. Karen, you mentioned that a pickleball building facility, you mentioned a steel structure. Is that a reasonable alternative versus a um, um, a typical construction company. Uh, okay, so I'm probably not the most authoritative person in the world to answer that question, but I have asked a lot of people, and a lot of people have said to me, absolutely. Generally speaking, it's much less expensive and has less maintenance. The thing that a lot of people don't know about steel construction is that you can make it look like anything you want to. So the Hershey Foundation in central Pennsylvania has a fine art center that looks like a medieval castle. I'm not kidding. You just look at it, you think you were in the middle of a, a, a medieval town in Germany. And it's a steel construction building. So you can do, you can make it look like everything else. It's not like it necessarily has to look like a warehouse. A lot of people think that that's the case for steel construction. Uh, I can speak to a little something along that line because I am also a member of the Experimental Aircraft Association local chapter, and we are putting up a hangar down at Glendale Airport uh, that is uh, 80 by 90 feet. And in this week alone, we have gotten the structure for three sides done. Uh, we still have to put all the siding on it and the insulation and so forth, but uh, as well as the roof. I, but, think, uh, I think the company that I spoke with told me that they average a thousand square feet per day in construction, which is way faster than 
brick and mortar kind of construction. How much is that costing you to put that up? Uh, well, we're using a good bit of sweat equity on it, but uh, <laughs> it probably was running for that size building something on the order of uh, a half million. of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.